For this project, we are going to learn about current and resistors. We're going to use the red LED, and for this project, the voltage meter will be on the 0.5 milliamp setting to start. The yellow pivot stand has two resistors. One of them is worth 10,000 ohms, and the other is worth only 47 ohms. There's a big difference in the power of these two resistors. Right now the slide switch is in the B position and it is allowing the 10,000 ohm resistor to operate right now. Right now the red LED is pretty dim and in a bright area you may not be able to tell that it's on. Right now the meter reads just under 0.2 milliamps. But then I'm going to move the switch on the voltage meter to the 50 milliamp setting and the meter essentially does not register anything because the current is so minute that it cannot really detect it. I'm going to now move the slide switch to the C position by passing the 10,000 ohm resistor and allowing the smaller one of, at 47 ohms to kick in. Now the LED becomes brighter and the meter now reads about 15 milliamps compared to 0.2 milliamps, not even that amount, earlier. If I was to push the press switch, both resistors are bypassed and the red LED gets brighter. Now there's more than 25 milliamps of electricity of current flowing through the meter. We can replace the red LED with the yellow LED and say how it affects the current. Resetting the circuit to its original settings, the voltage meter to the 0.5 milliamp setting, there is just over 0.15 milliamps of current being produced. And the yellow LED is very, very dim. You may not be able to even tell it's on. But if I move the slide switch to the 50 milliamp setting and move the slide switch to the C position, more than five milliamps of current is being generated. And even more when I hold down the press switch and the yellow LED is much brighter too. These LEDs have built-in resistors because otherwise the current would actually damage them. We are now going to talk about battery load. What is battery load? Battery load is the total number of components that a battery is supplying current to. In this case, the battery is supplying current to the regular motor, the two LEDs, and the hand crank. There are four devices that it is the battery is powering. The voltage meter, which we should know is connected directly across the battery, is set on the five volt setting and it now reads just over three volts. Now I'm going to move the slide switch to the B position and note that the voltage drops a little bit. It's now about three volts exactly, and all four components are in operation. If I turn off the slide switch, the voltage meter stays about the same, but in the beginning, it was higher. The reason why the voltage dropped when I turned on the slide switch is because even though the battery uses chemical reactions to make electricity, there is only a limited amount of chemicals within and not all of it can react simultaneously. So when a battery cannot supply as much current as the circuit needs, the voltage or electrical pressure will drop. And therefore that's what happens when the components are switched on in the circuit the voltage drops because the battery cannot supply enough current. 
if we were to remove some of the devices, like let's remove the two LEDs and the motor, leaving only the hand crank, then the voltage does not seem to drop as much because, although it just did, but that could be maybe because there were not as many components for the current to flow to. The next project is similar to the previous one, but now we are testing the battery low current instead of the voltage. We move the voltage meter so that it is connected to the circuit instead of directly across the battery and it's on the 50 milliamp setting. Now it's reading zero and the slide switches in the C position. We have the same number, number of devices, but when we turn on the slide switch, move it to the B position, the current gets pretty high, almost 50 milliamps. And when I turn it off, the current goes back to zero because now the voltage meter is not directly receiving current from the battery. In this circuit, it, has, it can only receive it when the slide switch is on. In the previous circuit, it was directly receiving current from the battery, regardless of whether the slide switch was on. But this circuit may help to explain why the current is very, why the battery voltage dropped in the preceding project. The battery may not be able to supply as much current as the circuit needs. Now what you can do is guess which devices need the most current, and then you can remove the other ones to see if you're right. For project 33, make your own parts, I am going to demonstrate a couple different makeshift conductors for this circuit, which simply includes the power meter. The power meter is set on the 50 milliamp setting and the slide switch is in the B position. For method A, which I cannot do, you have to spread a little bit of water into small puddles of different shapes on a flat surface, like a table, but I don't have a hard surface with me right now, so I have to move over to method B, but you would touch the ends of the puddles with the jumper wires. For method B, you need to fill out these shapes with several layers of pencil lead and then touch the ends of the jumper wires to the shapes. Let's see what happens. Right now, barely anything is noticeable. You barely notice any change. Sometimes it's very tricky, especially on the smaller shapes, but you have to make sure that the metallic ends of the wires are directly touching the lead. However, method C, which requires adult supervision if you are a child and permission, requires you to either sharpen a pencil on both sides or very carefully break a pencil in half and then touch the wires to the lead. Now this is going to be tricky because I'm using my one hand here but I'm going to try put the pencil point into this wire and then try contact the lead the red jumper wire with the lead and look what happens. It, it acts like a perfect conductor for the current to flow through and power up the meter all the way. Long narrow shapes have more resistance than short wide ones so therefore the circle and square for method B will be more conductive. They'll carry more current. The material used in pencils is actually more of a resistor than a conductor and it's used in actual devices for limiting current. I'm going to be able to do a partial demonstration of project 34 which is called liquid resistors. However, I can only demonstrate the first part which requires you to put the ends of the jumper wires into water, into a cup of water and 
the water is an excellent conductor of electricity and the meter registers all the way. It's on the same setting as in the previous project. But then for the second part of the project, you add salt to the water and stir it and dissolve it. The current would be even higher because salt ha water has less resistance than clear water. If the current is too high to register, then switch the meter to the 50 milliamp setting. And then you add more water to the cup and watch the current. If you have some distilled water, place the jumper wires in and measure the current and distilled water has very high resistance. You can also try other liquids, but don't drink any of them.